Milk, we can't guarantee. Cheese is bad, don't disagree. Butter, ew, like high key. Forced to be dairy free. Hi, folks, welcome back to Forced to Be Dairy Free. Today, we will be making fried okra. Yes, we will. So we're gonna change up, do we need to talk about this? We we'll probably should do a separate episode to talk about our change. Yes. All right? Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna find a menu this week. We're gonna start doing the recipe of the week. And then we'll do one video a week and do it that way. Yeah. And then you can work on a, a video to kind of explain everything. And then we'll welcome comments if, if uh, we need to retract and go back. Yeah. So I'm gonna teach you to make fried okra. I know that you can go on YouTube and you can find all sorts of recipes for fried okra. Yeah. This is, and most would be dairy free. There's a few that use like uh, buttermilk or milk or things like that. But this is the way I've always done it. It's a surefire method, surefire method to make your fried okra. So first thing first, if you can get one of these batter pros, are very handy for fried okra. Because uh, you don't want your okra to be overly dredged with the batter. And I am going to do a ratio of one to one of flour and cornmeal. And that's as simple as that. That is my batter. You can see I have some Cajun seasoning and pepper. I put that on at the end. Yes. And then if we need to add more of the flour and the cornmeal, if the uh, okra is too soggy, then we will do so. So we have quite a few okra. We're having literally okra for dinner. Of course, you can have for the okra for an appetizer if you want. But we are we are having it for our dinner. Yay! Yeah. The big key to the okra. Look at them. You know what the big key is? Do you know what the big key is? No. You can get cold. You can get cold. Or at least chill. So chilled. this was in our top part of our refrigerator, which has kind of a cooling part to it. To where it's very cold. I had cut these up in about half inch pieces about the size of Cameron's nose and uh, washed it thoroughly uh, for about three minutes. And of course, you still have the goo in here, but the key, key is to have it cold so the batter sticks. The goo, if, what we're gonna do to make sure that uh, it's not overly gooey when we eat it is I have my heat at a in-between medium and uh, medium high and that way when it cooks a little bit longer that the goo just kind of cooks out of it. Is goo the right term? I told you. So we don't want to over, we don't want to overfill our okra in the pot. So I'm going to do several stages of these. We'll just eat them as we go. Now you can see I have about three handfuls or so. And I get my batter really turned over. That's all we'll look at the camera. Uh, Todd, not all right, we'll let it get a little bit more. So you can see I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put into my batter pro what I need at that time. And I'll put my okra back in the fridge just to keep it chilled. Once we start really going, I can keep it out. Cameron, you are, do you, uh, you might want to tell them how excited you are about this okra because what's your favorite thing to eat? Okra! It is okra. Some people say they don't like okra, but you just haven't had it the right way. I don't know. And this is garden okra, too. So you can, I think you can see it's just very lightly battered. Our heat's good here, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in. And this is going to cook for three to four minutes. You just want it to be golden brown and not black or even dark brown. And just like anything, when you're frying up in batches, some batches are a little better than others. But we definitely work our darndest to produce quality every time. Right? One of the Uh-huh. Okay, where? That's too skinny. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've well, a few of those. So and I can already tell you, I mean, I need more. That's... I'm going to need more, Cameron. We have a lot of okra. So another thing about okra, we talk about gardening and things that don't take a lot of space. 
Okra is really, really easy to grow. And it's great because when a lot of vegetables really don't thrive in the heat as your summer goes on, the okra takes off when it gets really hot. It likes it hot. So uh, you can be sitting there and you can grow your okra plants and you feel like they aren't doing anything and it'll, the hotter it gets, it'll just start shooting off. And Yay. you can plant three plants of okra, two plants of okra, and it'll keep replenishing your, you'll get an okra supply for a month, right? Right? Yeah, right! Yeah, so if you like it, and like I said, it doesn't take up a lot, of, a lot of room, you can grow a lot of it. And then if you want to, I'm not into pickling things really, but you can pickle your okra and all that other fun stuff. Alright, how are we doing over here, Cameron? We're doing good. Okay, we're doing good. You can see that we didn't overfill the pot with okra to where the okra doesn't stick together. It looks beautiful in there. All right, so you can see that the okra is golden brown, some a little darker brown, so it's time to pull out. It cooked for about six minutes, this batch did. Sometimes the batches go a little bit faster, it seems, as the oil gets to its full heat. You want to make sure and use a slotted spoon with this and try to shake off as much oil as you can. Now I'm pretty good at making okra. My dad's the master at it. Uh, this is one of those if you definitely have a bigger cast iron or a, a heavier pot. The heavier pot you use, the better. And now I'm going to get some of my Cajun seasoning. Drizzle that on there. And some of the black pepper. And mix that around. All right, guys, we are done with the fried okra, and now I'm going to take a nice little bite. This thing seems crispy. Look. Okay. Mmm. Bob and Pete. Very good. Awesome. Okay, yeah. Cool, you did fast. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a video. Bye, guys. Bye.